what we need to get out of this is absolute clarity in, in at least three areas. First of all, we need a, a list of rich country ambitious emission reduction targets for the year 2020. Secondly, we need absolute clarity on what major developing countries like China and India are going to do to limit the growth of their emissions. And thirdly, we need absolute clarity on the financial support that's going to be available, especially for poorer developing countries, to help them adapt to the impacts of climate change. When we, when we leave Copenhagen, at least those three issues need to be absolutely clear. Give me your single biggest obstacle to a deal here. Uh, the level of ambition. At the moment, the, the, country, the targets that rich countries have committed to are not enough to get us to where science says we need to be if we want to avoid dangerous climate change. So we need to see more ambition in this process. Back in Barcelona, the last time we met, the meeting that preceded this, I'm not going to say you were pessimistic, but you're certainly a lot more cautious. What's changed? You're, you're a bit more upbeat now, aren't, aren't you? A lot more, for two reasons. First of all, because one country after another, both developed and developing, have been announcing very significant commitments to either reduce their emissions or limit the growth. Secondly, uh, over 100 world leaders have said that they want to be at the closure of Copenhagen in order to celebrate success. They're not coming here for failure. Uh, including Barack Obama. He was going to come here on Wednesday. Now he's coming at the end of next week. That's, that's significant. Yes, that's very significant indeed. Explain to me the, uh, and it's significant simply because you don't think he would show up uh, if, if he didn't think he was going to get a deal. Is that the basic well, he's, idea? He said all along, I'm willing to come, I'm willing to contribute, providing I have the feeling that people are negotiating in good faith. And the fact that he's coming, I think, is an indication that he's satisfied on that point. Explain to me how the finance side of this, how you would like to see the finance side of this work. Well, what I would like to see on the table is, is so-called prompt start financing, or in other words, immediate money, say $10 billion a year for 2010, 2011, and 2012, to serve two purposes. First of all, to help poor developing countries to adapt to the impacts of climate change that they're seeing already, and secondly, to help them develop solid plans that can change the direction of their economic growth in a more sustainable way. And this, this $10 billion, obviously it's supposed to balloon into a much larger number the closer we get to 2020 and 2050. Correct. I mean, this is done by the market or this is government subsidies? How, how would that money get spent? Most of that money will come from the market. I think about 85% of investments in the energy and industry sector will come from private companies, from private investments. But in order to make those investments go an extra green mile, you need some public money to top them up and make the environmental technology possible that's not possible under normal market conditions. So it's a matter of, of really blending public and private financial resources in a smart way. Some people say we need a, a carbon price. Do you see, that, see it that way? I think that's essential. I think we already see the beginning of that under the Kyoto Protocol. There, there's talk about $40 being the right number. Well, if the targets are ambitious enough, then the, then the carbon price will go up. And I think what we need to do is ultimately move towards a global carbon market. Mm -hmm. Well, something the United States has not agreed to yet. Do you see the United States being involved in some kind of global market? Well, I think the United States invented emissions trading uh, on, on SO2 and, and NOx. The Kyoto Protocol trading was very much built on, on American ideas. I see trading being at the heart of the legislation that's now being considered by the Senate and that made it through the House. So I think that that's where we're going, including the United States. When are we going to get a treaty? I think six months later. I think we need to get that by about June of 2010. Some people are talking about Mexico end of the year. You think that'd be a bad idea, huh? Well, I think that's letting it slip very long. I think we should capitalize on Copenhagen uh, as quickly as possible after it's done and not just leave this lying around for a whole year. All right. Thank you very much. That was Ivo de Boer, the UN's chief climate uh, change official here.